Thank you again for attending. I appreciate everyone taking the time out of their evening to attend this information session. This is the Early Career uh, Awards session. My name is Megan Salek and I'm the Engagement Manager for ATSI. First, uh, we'd like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the lands and waters on which I uh, come from you today, the Nunawal people, and we pay our respects to their elders past and present. I'd also like to acknowledge the lands on which our fellows work, live and apply science, technology and engineering. We acknowledge traditional knowledge and the deep history of innovation it embodies. So who are we? We're the Australian Academy of Technological Sciences and Engineering. We are an independent non-government organization, registered charity led by a diverse fellowship of over 900 fellows. Since 1975, the Academy has grown from 65 fellows to over 900 who are responding to Australia's most urgent and complex challenges. We're an authoritative and independent voice to government and our world-class STEM career programs demonstrate how we tackle our most urgent challenges. I'd like to now hand over to our membership manager, Elvira, as she will talk us through the suite of awards that ATSI offers. Thank you, Megan. The awards nominations and judging processes are a very detailed and robust process to elect new awardees each year. Each year, ATSI recognises outstanding senior and emerging innovators with national awards. The ATSI awards are a flagship moment for ATSI and the Australian STEM community to celebrate our applied scientists, technologists, engineers and entrepreneurs from diverse fields. Our ATSI Awards categories include our Early Career Awards. Our David and Valerie Solomon Award recognises and celebrates public sector researchers who are engaged with industry and collaborating with industrial researchers to drive collaborative activities, producing real world impact. Our Ezio Rosado Polymer Scholarship acknowledges and celebrates the outstanding achievements and potential impact of a PhD candidate in the field of polymer science or engineering. Our ICM Agri-Food Award acknowledges two early career innovators who have achieved substantial peer or industry recognition in the Australian food sector. Our mid and senior career awards include our Clooney's Ross Technology Innovation Awards, which recognizes contributions by dedicated individuals or teams who have shared their vision and knowledge with others to apply technology for the benefit of Australia and beyond. Our Batterham Medal for Engineering Excellence is an early to mid-career award for a graduate engineer who has achieved substantial peer industry recognition for their work in the past five years. And our Traditional Knowledge Innovation Award uh, celebrate STEM research and development by Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples or communities, which is based on or significantly incorporates or builds on traditional knowledge. I would like to introduce Dr. Ian Dagley as the chair of the Ezio Rosado Polymer Scholarship Committee. Thank you very much, Elvira. Um, so in, in the role of uh, chair of this committee, um, we have a, a group of uh, about six people involved in making the selection. The process of selection is described in more detail later in the talk. Uh, my role as chair is to chair the meeting. Uh, each of the, um, each of the uh, people on the committee will have independently uh, reviewed the awards and come up with their own priority list. And then we have, hold a meeting and uh, collectively decide on whether we whether we make one or at the most two awards. Just to provide a bit of background to myself, um, so I, my career has uh, spanned both defence science and technology and also working in the Cooperative Research Centres program. I ran the CRC for polymers for over 20 years. The, the centre itself ran for 25 years and a legacy of the centre was the Ezio Rosado Polymer Scholarship. And I'll talk a little bit more now about that scholarship and uh, provide further information beyond what Elvira has said. So uh, she's told you that it celebrates outstanding achievement. 
and potential impact of a PhD candidate, and it's exclusively uh, work in the area of problem science and engineering. It's designed to supplement the funding um, of an existing PhD scholarship is undertaking or about to undertake PhD studies in the field. And it, uh, it looks specifically at uh, research targeting delivering impact to Australia. The scholarship provides $10,000 a year for up to 10 years, up to three years, sorry. And uh, there's an initial $5,000 uh, travel fund to support academic pursuits and research goals. Um, and Etsy administers this um, scholarship. And as I mentioned before, it's a legacy of the CRC for Polymers. David and Valerie Solomon Award, uh, as was mentioned, is targeted at early mid-career uh, science and technology graduates working in academia or in industry. And um, they have to have demonstrated substantial ability to foster industry um, research collaborations and knowledge transfer for the benefits of Australia. The winner will receive a unique award, a cash prize of $15,000 and 12 months of mentor mentoring from a senior entrepreneur industry fellow in the academy. And in addition to that, another $5,000 travel expenses to enhance the mentoring experience. The, the third award we're talking about today is the ICM AgriFutures Award that recognises uh, the outstanding work of two early career scientists or technologists. Uh, the awardees will have achieved substantial peer or industry recognition for their work in the field. Uh, and the field has to be critical to the continued improvement of the overall Australian food sector in the past five years. The award is made for one male and one female. Um, the award winners received $5,000 sponsored by ACM Agribusiness, um, which is one of Australia's major agribusiness groups. Back to you, Elvira. Thank you, Ian. Uh, you'll find the awards guidelines and nomination, and nomination portal on our website, which is displayed on the screen. We recommend reading the guidelines before you commence gathering all the information for the nomination. The nomination process is very detailed and can take several hours to gather the required information and documents. No self-nominations are allowed for these awards. You will need to register a profile on the ATSI nominations website and then select which award the nomination is for. Each of the awards have different document requirements and these are listed in the guidelines. All three awards require the following, the proposer and nominee details and contact information. The nominee's current role and an executive overview with a maximum of 100 words. Some of the awards require a referee report or a seconder letter and the seconder's details or a nominee's CV and some of the awards don't. For the selection process, the award committee members will individually examine, score and comment on all the nominations received. The awards committee will then meet by Zoom to discuss the nominees and decide on the winner or winners. The names and citation of each awardee is provided to the ATSI board for approval. We contact the awardees and prepare for the ATSI Awards Gala Dinner to be held in Melbourne on the 17th of October. On the screen, you will see the key dates for the awards. Nominations will close COB Wednesday the 15th of May. I would like to now introduce you to our previous awardees. Firstly, our 2022 David and Valerie Solomon Awardee, Dr. Laura Downey. Hi, everyone. Uh, so a pleasure to be here tonight um, and also such a privilege to have received this award. So um, ATSI have just asked me to provide some information about myself, uh, the work and research that I undertake, and I guess some of the um, 
process, so about the nomination process, as well as the, the range of benefits um, the award um, has afforded um, over the last couple of years. So I'm a professor in the Department of Optometry and Vision Sciences at the University of Melbourne. I'm an optometrist and a clinician scientist, and a major focus of my research is to develop new methods to identify and treat conditions that affect the surface of the eye. So these conditions are very common in our society and have adverse impacts on people's vision as well as their quality of life. So I received the David and Valerie Solomon Award in 2022, and this was for uh, the research we've done to invent a new device um, called ADMIRE, which stands for Acoustically Driven Microfluidic Extensional Rheometry. Um, but it's a complex name for a quite um, clever but small device that we believe has the potential to really transform how clinicians identify dry eye in the clinic um, and can then be used to provide better patient care. So what the technology does is it involves um, collecting a microliter tear sample from a patient's eye, and then we analyze the viscoelastic properties or kind of how the stretchiness of that tear um, behaves over a matter of milliseconds. And that gives us a comprehensive insight into the health of a patient's tear. So in terms of who nominated me for the award, um, it was a commercialization mentor um, at the university, um, Dr. Andrew Ronke, uh, who has been working with our team as we work towards translating this technology into the clinic. And so um, he's a physiotherapist by original training, uh, but now is actually a CEO of an ASX listed company himself, uh, which involves the development and sale of motion analysis technologies. Uh, and so he's been very supportive of our group um, in terms of navigating uh, the kind of the progress from academic research uh, as we move into a commercial venture. So in terms of why people should consider applying for these awards, um, the ATSI awards are highly regarded. Um, and so one of the, the benefits for my team as well has been receiving the award really shone some national interest in the research we're undertaking. So this included some feature articles in the press. Uh, we've had opportunities to engage at ATSI events. Um, and I've particularly enjoyed that element where I've been able to meet a real diversity of scientists across different disciplines. And that's all the way from, you know, very senior ATSI fellows uh, through to emerging leaders and even PhD candidates. And so that diversity of expertise and career stage uh, has been something I've really enjoyed and the connections made through those networking events. I also think it's really important that we do nominate our colleagues. Um, there are many people doing outstanding work. And so this is an op opportunity to recognize either an individual or a team uh, to really shine a light um, on this impactful research um, being undertaken in Australia. In terms of what it meant to me personally um, to win the award, uh, I was very humbled and it's really been a highlight of my career. Um, I'm very inspired actually by Professor Solomon's leadership. Um, so he has really um, an amazing career in academic industry collaboration. And also Mrs. Solomon um, has had her own entrepreneurial journey and a, a real advocate for women in science to pursue their commercial aspirations. So I feel very fortunate um, that we have these generous philanthropic donors who've enabled this award for early and mid-career researchers. And it really speaks to their commitment um, to build um, younger researchers and also acknowledge the importance of knowledge transfer and how it can benefit society. Um, in terms of the mentoring, so that's another key element of this particular award. And when I received the award um, through Alvira, who connected me with two ATSI fellows, um, I've been able to have regular mentoring sessions um, to kind of delve into areas as our project progresses to, to assist us um, as we move to commercialise the technology. So 
These mentors, um, Associate Professor Elaine Saunders and Professor Nick Volker, have been extremely generous with their time. Um, and just as one example, I, I was given the opportunity to present at a Macedon Rangers Innovation Seminar last year uh, and met a range of other scientists working in allied health who are also undertaking this journey um, to translate their innovations into clinical practice. Uh, and that's all I had, but happy to answer any questions as well um, at the end of the session. Thank you. Thank you, Laura. I'd like to now introduce you our 2023 Ezio Rosado Polymer Scholarship Awardee, Bailey Richardson. Well, thank you for all for having me. Um, yeah, I, my name is Bailey Richardson and I was the award recipient of the 2023 Ezio Rosado Polymer Scholarship. Um, I'm currently in my second year of my PhD uh, at the Queensland University of Technology. And my research is inspired by biology and how nature's uh, enzymes and proteins have very defined folding and functionality within the body and how they can basically be used to catalyze reactions without you even thinking about it. So they're quite uh, robust and have a lot of purposes uh, within uh, biological research. And so what I try to aim to do is make biologically inspired polymers that can adapt to their environment, depending on, uh, in my case, the pH. And the differences in pH allow them to assemble in different ways. Um, but the added functionality that I wanted to have was that they're also photoreactive. So we can use light. Um, so I shine blue light on my stuff and it reacts in different ways. And what this is, allows us to do is probe how the structure of my assembled molecules can actually change uh, molecule uh, reactivity. Um, so while my research is quite fundamental and in the early stages, um, being more synthetic chemistry based rather than industrially based, um, there's very large uh, applications within uh, the biomedical research fields for imaging, sensing, uh, targeted drug delivery systems. Um, if we can know how molecules react to different environments, then maybe we can find ways to actually target different areas within the body. Um, so in terms of nominations, um, I was first uh, forwarded an email by my supervisor, my primary supervisor about the award. And I guess that's the first time I kind of was introduced to ATSI as a whole um, organization. Um, so we uh, got together and sat down and said, I think we can make a really, really strong application for this. Uh, we then went to the head of my school, so the School of Chemistry and Physics at QUT, as well as the Faculty of Science head um, to really put a, together quite a unique and strong application, um, targeting my pre previous research outcomes, as well as the I guess, extracurricular activities that I do, uh, such as uh, helping out with the QT Chemistry Club and a couple of other early career research uh, programs that I do. Um, so putting all of that together to really make a strong application for this award. Uh, the nomination process was, it's quite a lot in terms of if it's your first uh, award application. Um, so getting together really strong CVs, um, your uh, nominator, um, reference, um, as well as just trying to make your research as brief, but as concise as possible uh, to have the best um, application possible. Um, but in saying that, I think it's probably helped me the most in terms of uh, communication as well. Um, and I think that people who should apply are anyone who's excelling in their early PhD um, or even undergraduates who are going into a PhD within the polymer field. Um, I think it also helps to build a better relationship between you and your supervisor, um, as well as any other people that are uh, endorsers of the application. Uh, winning this award was probably, yeah, like Laura said, the biggest achievement that um, I've ever had. Um, coming straight from an undergraduate degree, all I ever received was, you know, Good work on your you know um educational upside and stuff like that so um to be recognized on a national level is quite 
um, quite a great experience. When I got the email saying that uh, I was the winner, I nearly jumped out of my seat. Um, but I had to control myself being in the office space. So you just on mute, Bailey. <laughs> Apologize. Um, uh, but so yeah, winning this award definitely means um, the world to me. Uh, it's not only helped me with um, building a network of people and organizations that I can potentially go to in terms of uh, the next steps after a PhD, um, but it's also helped me uh, probably the most with uh, communication. Uh, so before this award, I've never actually been in front of a camera um, doing the award uh, videos, so that was uh, quite daunting, um, but definitely a great experience. Um, and being able to communicate your science effectively to people who don't have any idea about what you're working with. Um, so yeah, talking to your grandparents is a great example. Um, so trying to get your whole research into the words that they can understand is probably the best tip I could ever give to someone. Um, but also working with uh, journalists, um, research articles, um, definitely helped me with my communication about my project and also helped me to um, explain my project since if you can't, you can probably have the best science in the world, but if you can't effectively communicate that, then you won't be heard in terms of uh, media if you're applying for applications or grants. Um, so I think this award has definitely helped me with that, um, as well as just networking opportunities, uh, being able to go see the, the new fellow showcase and the awards night, meeting people who are leading in their research fields or industrial careers. Um, I think that's definitely helps. Um, and of course, with this uh, scholarship, it's a digital top up scholarship. So extra money is always great uh, during a PhD. Um, so usually using this money will help me to um, go overseas later on this year. Uh, so I'll be going to Europe for a couple of conferences so I can display my research, the research that we have at QT and of course in Australia to a broader um, target audience um, to hopefully, you know, give some notoriety to uh, display what Australia has to offer in terms of science um, and particular polymer chemistry. So um, yeah, definitely recommend anyone to apply for this award if you're in a polymer field. Um, yeah, the benefits definitely, you know, outweigh the, the little hazards of or the little tasks of creating the application. So yeah, thank you. Thank you, Bailey. I'd now like to introduce our 2023 ICM Agri-Food Awardee, Dr. Natalie Morgan. Hi, yes, uh, I'm Nat, and I'm a senior lecturer in animal science at Curtin University in Perth. So it's a nicer time for me than for the rest of you. Um, so I, as you said, I won the Agri-Food Award. So I'm a chicken researcher. So I research poultry and nutrition. Um, and my award was for how I've contributed towards improving how chicken diets are formulated. Um, so I, I've been working on proving that um, fiber is a really important component of chicken diets. So we tend to just focus on getting enough protein in them um, to get them as big as possible for our meat chickens. Um, and yeah, just focus on um, calcium and protein for our laying hens. But I've proved that fiber is super important for their digestion. Um, and I've made a database um, of more accurate um, fiber values that the commercial producers are using now in their um, diet formulation software. Um, and I've also worked on developing new prebiotics for chickens, so sort of short chain sugars um, that are good at fueling the beneficial bacteria in the chicken's guts. Um, so I've looked at making um, different prebiotics from cheap byproducts and waste. Um, so turning a waste into something useful for the poultry industry. Um, so I was nominated by my line manager at work, so the head of our discipline in agriculture. Um, and then my seconder was one of my industry funders. So I definitely recommend if you can get one of like someone that works closely with you in your research or ideally has funded your research. So they obviously think it's a good idea. Um, they, yeah, I got a really awesome letter from my seconder for that. So it really helped me for agriculture to show um, how relevant my work is for the industry and that I was having a direct impact 
on the chickens of Australia, I guess, um, and the industry. So that really helped me getting a good second up. Um, for why, sh why should you apply? So um, it really helps. Um, well, for me, I'd only just moved to Curtin um, for this university. So it really helped me sort of show what I was doing to everyone. Um, it can help you with getting promotions. It can really help you get sort of established in your field because um, they want to show you off and get you lots of press. So um, it really helps getting everyone to know what you're doing. Um, it's also good for the university. They're very happy with you because they look good. Um, so that's very helpful too. And I found that it did help me get some more research funding. And generally, chickens are not seen as very glamorous, um, not a very sexy industry to be in. So it was a really good opportunity for me to promote the poultry industry. Um, sort of everyone loves their chicken and eggs, but no one kind of knows the bit before. So it was a really good opportunity just to promote the industry, um, get like the farmers involved, get them knowing what was going on. Um, and yeah, really get thinking people thinking more about our chicken friends. Um, so for the process, like I said, it can take a while to gather all the information together. Um, and as Bailey said, it's really good to work with the person sort of nominating you to develop your statements and um, help get all of that information together. I'm getting your head of school and everything on board as well. So they can all help like proofread it and make sure you've got everything in there that's going to help you get there. Um, and like I said, get a good seconder as well that really knows um, what you're doing and um, what your research is about so they can back up everything you're saying. Um, yeah, so like I said, it was just a really good chance to get promotion, get press, um, get everyone knowing what you're doing, um, get funders knowing what you're doing um, and promote the work you're doing in the industry that you're in. Um, for me, like I said, it's really helped me get the uni knowing what I'm doing. So I've joined like university research committees from it. Um, I've helped other um, researchers applying for the, this award and similar awards. Um, and yeah, really helped to support sort of some of the other early career and mid-career researchers. And also, um, like I said, as a result from having the press, I also got more funding for my research because um, more people knew what I was doing. Um, and they were interested, so it really helped me in that as well, get some more research funding to help the chickens. Thank you very much. And Thank yeah, you. Get our questions. Thank you, Natalie. Thank you all for your attention. And we will now open up the Q&A session. And the chair and the previous awardees are happy to answer any questions you have. Please use the electronic raise hand button on the bottom of your screen in the reactions tab or you can um, type in your questions in the chat. Also happy for the awardees or uh, the chair to make any further comments if they like. So we do have a question. Um, for the ESEO scholarship, the guideline document includes a word limit for the executive overview, 100 words, yes. um, but not for the other sections. Is it possible to have a little bit more detail about the word limits for the other sections of the applications? Or are there any? There aren't any word limits for the other sections. Great. Just, uh, sorry, for the CV, there's a maximum of two pages. I think uh, I might just make a comment on that. Uh, Bailey made a very good point about communication and trying to be succinct. And I think you've got to strike that balance between, uh, you know, providing clarity around what it is that you're, you're doing. You know, it depends on the on the, the component you're filling in. But in the case of this scholarship, part of it, for example, involves describing what your research is going to do. Um, it it does indicate what you have to broadly include in that response, but. Uh, you know, certainly the panel is, the committee is not looking for pages and pages. It's looking for the succinct, concise uh, descriptions of of, um, of of your research or more generally your response to the various questions you're asked. So just bear that in mind. Um, the, the panel members in, in the case of that scholarship uh, are probably reviewing perhaps 10 or more applications. So 
you really want to try and make uh, your your result your uh, application stand out because uh, of the way you've written it and uh, the clarity of uh, the way you've addressed the criteria. Thank you, Ian. All right. Well, thank everybody for attending. We appreciate you taking the time to come here tonight. Um, the recording uh, will be up soon and we'll send a link to all of the those that registered as well. And also, if you have any further questions during the nomination process, please send us an email at membership at atsi.org.au. Um, also, as a reminder, the guidelines are on our website and on in the nominations portal. Thank you all and enjoy the rest of your evening.